So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to go old school this afternoon. It's afternoon here where I am in Alberta. If you could get out a piece of paper, I'd really appreciate it. And a writing utensil. I'm not going to tell you to write with crayon or pencil or a pen or a marker, whatever you would like to do, because I'm going to model my lessons. And as I model my lessons, I'm just going to ask you the questions that you will ask the kids. So while you're getting a piece of paper ready, and as I keep uh, checking my admittance list here, I will get going. There you go. I think we're all in. If not, I'll add them later. There you go. So, wouldn't it be great after the couple of years that we've had trying to teach in various situations, wouldn't it be great to just go into your class and share a few laughs with the kids? Now, I know that's difficult and I know you're using Zoom, but hey, even with Zoom, you can share a few laughs with the kids. Now, I'm not here to teach you to be funny. I'm just saying anybody, everybody can actually work with humor lessons. And the way I set my lessons up is you can talk to kids about humor, go from there. Now, I taught humor for a number of reasons. One of them was to make that connection with the kids. It's tough. I taught junior high. And it's tough to make a connection with kids. I also taught because when I told a funny story about myself, I actually had them in the palm of my hand. It was the only time they actually listened to me if I told some funny story about myself. I kind of think things just went to a deeper level. And of course, you teach humor for memory. And I will mention that a few times as we go through. So whether you think you're funny or not, we're teaching humor lessons. Would that make a difference to you? So I am, as I said, if you uh, were running, getting a pencil here, I'm modeling the lessons as we go along. So you have a paper and a pencil and just answer the questions. And then, then those will be the questions you ask the kids. So I'm going to go with my lesson plan. I'm doing uh, my PowerPoint presentation here for you. So uh, why is humor important? I want to start with that and recognizing humor readiness. And if you can't see my chart paper, I'll just pull it up as we go. I don't have too many charts, so that's the good thing. So recognizing humor readiness with the students, are they ready to actually learn? Then I will go through what I call, sorry about the extra noise, rules of engagement, how I actually taught the lessons and how you will teach the lessons. So that is my lesson. I'm going to start with a couple of points about my humor journey. It's been a long one. Um, my father was one of those very strange people um males i must put him in a category here he's 93 last week so he's still alive still laughing still encouraging my jokes um during this pandemic i actually gave him a humor book and he went through the lessons and started working on some jokes i thought that was so great but i was praised for being funny now in my era that was not a biggie with girls. And I didn't realize I was the only one. But I started teaching and I was so serious when I started. I had a grade seven class and uh, I walked in one day and there was some plastic poop on my chair. And I went and I had the hissy fit, right? You know, you do that. You have that hissy fit and you go, oh, blah, blah, blah. and years later, one of the girls who actually had put the poop on my chair came up to me and said, Mrs. Carter, we thought you'd think that was funny. 
Oh, yeah. I took life way too seriously when I started. It wasn't until I had a really bad year. It was one of those political years. And I know all of you sitting in front of me here has had a bad political year. It could be this past year, could be a couple of years ago, whatever politics kind of interfere with our life as a teacher. There's three P's you can't do anything about. Politics, parents, principals, and unfortunately, I had to add pandemic, right? So we're kind of stuck in that mode. But politics hit me really hard one year. And I was ready to quit teaching just because of the politics of the actual job. And uh, I made it through to Christmas and was still pondering, should I quit, shouldn't I? And I was at the Christmas table and I looked around the Christmas table and my dad's business wasn't doing very well. My mother had just retired and she was doing crafts to make grocery money. My brother wasn't working. It was a down uh, side to the oil industry here in Alberta. And I looked at my 10-year-old daughter, and she wasn't working either, the little bum. And I looked around the table, and I realized I'm the only one working at this table. And so I thought, well, of course I can't quit teaching. I'm going to continue to teach. Somebody had to make some money to pay for that Christmas dinner, right? So I got back to school, and for whatever reason, I started talking about stand-up comedy to my colleagues. And I must have gone into that pipe dream uh, quite a few times because one of my friends said, quit talking about it and just do it. So I took that challenge and I went to Yuck Yucks. Now, what a den of iniquity Yuck Yucks is. I went there and hung around with 18-year-old boys who thought they were really funny. Now, I was 40 that year. And I was hanging around Yuck Yucks, and the first time I went in, ooh, I had not really thought this through. I went in there in costume. I had a tutu on. It was so nice. And I told this long story, and to give the audience credit, they didn't throw anything at me, but they were like, looking at me like deer in the headlights, like, oh, who is this woman? I went home and thought about the whole thing. And um, I went back and kind of honed my skills a little bit. And I thought, oh, this is really cool. And I'd have recipe cards and I'd write down funny jokes, check, check, and not so funny work on that one. That's how I, I rolled with this yak yak thing. And one day this lady came up to me and she says, you know, you're really funny. I really appreciated you. And I thought, oh, I'm getting some love here. I never get love in junior high, right? So she told me she really liked me. And then she told me uh, that she was dealing with cancer. And I thought, oh, from my little five-minute segment, I guess I had taken her out of her um, whole life and kind of presented a funny thing to her. And I started thinking, well, maybe I can do that same connection with my kids. And I went back to school and I started working on comedy lessons with the kids. And I was trying to empower the girls a little bit and get them trying to be funny because mm, girls are not trained to be funny. And it worked. And we were doing all sorts of things. And uh, the lessons changed and evolved and got better, I hope. And we went on with that. And I shut my door to my classroom, kept the politics and every other P thing out, and just worked with the kids on some humor. It was great. I really liked it. I wanted to connect. I wanted to enjoy my experience as a teacher and have them enjoy their experience, you know, as a kid in school. So many times we don't just, you know, have a great day. We just are so focused on curriculum, right? You're language arts teachers, I'm assuming. And I think that as language arts teachers, you have the perfect venue to teach humor. You can teach them humor for 
their writing skills. You can teach them humor uh, for the speeches they have to give. I think we're still doing that oral business in language arts uh, to a greater or lesser degree. And uh, that's what you're moving toward. Now, I worked in health class and I had 40 minute lessons and we moved along in health because I thought it was important. It was one of those uh, like little blank areas in the curriculum where you could fill it in yourself. So why? Why are we teaching um, human? Boys and girls, I want you to write down on your piece of paper why humor is important to you. Now, this is a question we hardly ever ask kids, right? Why is humor important? I even wrote it. Why is humor important? So many reasons will come out. You can type your reason in the chat box um, if you have time, but I would rather you wrote it on a piece of paper so you can keep it for later. Why is it important to you? Well, let's just start with the one I mentioned before, which is memory. Now, I was playing a game with my friends, you know, one of those evenings when you're, well, in the old days when you got to go out and about. And it was called dictionary in our little terminology. You know, you have the dictionary in front of you and you look up a word and you want everybody to write their own definition of it. If you've played that kind of version of that game. So as those definitions are being read out, one that's true and three or four or whatever that aren't, you're supposed to guess which one it is. So the guy who had given the word, which was pangolin, um, he read them all out and he got to the one definition that was a pangolin is a long tail toothless mammal. Toothless mammal. We're rolling. We've been drinking. We're rolling on the floor. Thinking, that's so funny. Toothless. It, that's not the right answer. Uh, yes, it was. My friend comes from Newfoundland and toothless to him was toothless. I will never, never forget what a pangolin is. So my memory was embedded with that little piece of trivia, never ever to get out again, right? It makes our day a happier day if we have a few things to laugh about. We make these connections. I had this little girl, her name, Mallory. Her, she was, I think, a nice girl, but I wasn't sure. She got dropped into my grade eight homeroom. And she had a big chip on her shoulder. Oh, and it was painful to be with her that year. Finally, in May, she said something that was amusing. And I turned to her and said, oh, that was so funny, Mallory. She all of a sudden became my biggest fan. And I thought to myself, May, why did it take until May till we kind of got this connection? Unfortunately, I didn't recognize she needed some um, recognition, I think, right? Coping. Now, these last couple of years, coping with things has been a hard job. And if you can see the humor in something, maybe that will get you through. And these are things that you can talk to the kids about as you go through this. It's a stress relief. I don't actually go running. I don't do that stress relief. I do make up jokes over the news with my husband who is ranting about the news and I start writing it down. That's funny to me. Okay. We're just happier. And make sure you tell the kids. They will make more money if they're funny. It is a fact, they say. All these facts I read somewhere, I couldn't tell you who told me that, but I think it's, it's true. Now, humor readiness is something 
That's really important. So I wrote this down too. Recognizing uh, humor readiness with the kids. Now, if you teach grade sevens, you might want to try humor lessons at the end of the year. Humor lessons for grade sevens is slapstick, I think. They like physical humor, slapstick. As you go back in time, grade sixes, they just um, giggle. Boys giggle. So you have to figure out whether your class is ready for these. If not, maybe wait till the end of the year. Maybe it's something you can do in January. Maybe it's something you can um, use at the end of uh, December, whatever. So this is how we're going to start humor readiness. I want you to write down, I love teaching virtually because fill in the blanks why do you love teaching virtually thank you for some of your answers here thanks thanks i agree with you a hundred percent okay now this is the other thing. If I think what you wrote down is funny, you win money. Now let's translate that to what you would say to your kids. You've been teaching them for a while, it's October. When you go in on Monday, say to them, I want you to write down and always give them the same size piece of paper. Here's what I did. I would use little hearts. I'm an art teacher. So like this is therapy for me, cutting out pink hearts for kids, right? So I would give them each a heart. And I would say, I want you to write on that piece of paper why you love taking social studies from me. And it is absolutely amazing. You ask them to be funny. Some kids have no clue they have never been asked to be funny before, so they'll give you a straight answer. And those kids that are giving you the straight answers are giving you things that are eye-opening to you. And you do this anonymously. Do not write your name on this piece of paper. I would say, why do you love taking social studies from me? And they would give me all sorts of fun things that happened. And some of them couldn't think of anything. So that was okay, too. Some of them just draw that blank. Now, what you do next is take those pieces of paper that they wrote on. And the first time you do it, take them home and go through them. And of course, check out things that are not appropriate for your class. Just take them, put them away. Uh, what I used to do, I would do it improv uh, because I have had some experience doing improv. But if you haven't, for sure, take them home. And then what you do is you put in your own answers, right? And you read them to the class anonymously and see what they think is funny. You're actually doing it. You're doing one level and another level and another. You're trying to figure out what makes them laugh. Does anything in that list make them laugh? You don't know. So if they laugh, <laughs> I had chocolate coins and I would dole out chocolate coins. If I thought it was funny, you win money. Or if the class laughed, you got money. Sometimes something had happened in the back of the room that was really hilarious that went over my head and they would laugh about it. And that's okay too. And one thing I want to mention is class clowns are not funny. Class clowns are attention seekers generally. So Maybe teaching humor will help turn around that class clown into actually getting genuine laughs instead of uh, attention. Now, one thing about humor, they say, is when you laugh, you create dopamine in your head. Well, 
junior high kids have a plethora of dopamine, do they not? And so, hey, sometimes they're just laughing. They're having a great, great thing. Now, you've decided that the kids are ready. Okay, kids are ready. So now, here's the lessons, rules of engagement. Okay, and these are my lessons. I have about three main points to go through for lessons. So, lesson one, I call it a fact-finding lesson. And what I do is start figuring out what humor is for them. And I use these chart papers because I can keep the paper in the classroom and we can refer to them later. So this is just something as I go along, you don't have to teach the humor lessons like bang, bang, bang. You can start them, stop them, put them later. There's no rules to my curriculum here. You just do what you want to do. Okay. So what I would do before the class is I'd have some charts and I'd ask them in their humor journal, because already you've asked them a question, you know, what does humor do for you. You've asked them some questions. And on their piece of paper, I'm going to ask them and ask you, boys and girls, to write down what is your favorite funny TV show? Okay. Don't share it with anybody else. Just write it on your paper. What's your funny TV show? You know, kids, they're going to compare and, you know, but off the top of their head, what's the funny a TV show they have. And what you do is you start writing the names of the TV show and you'll find six or seven kids will like the same show. So you put a check mark behind them, right? So it's very quickly. I just go up and down the rows or circle if you're that kind of teacher, but up and down the rows to find out what their TV shows are. Information for you. Next chart. Uh, write down your funniest character, the, the person you think is funniest in those TV shows. And they write something down because, hey, let's face it, we've been stuck in the house long enough. They've been watching a lot of TV. Unfortunately for us right now, there's a lot of sources of TV shows where, you know, uh, you don't know where that show is, let alone watch it. So that's number two. Number three is. Who's your, now you don't have to do this one. This one's optional. Who's your funniest stand up character? And that can create a whole discussion right there. They don't know what stand up is. Okay. Especially through this pandemic, there hasn't been anything live going on with stand up. So that's an iffy one. Then the last one is who is the funniest person that you know, real person? Write that down in your um, journal. Okay. Now, here's something I didn't um, write down um, because I forgot. Um, you will want them to write down what is their definition of humor. There's another question for that first. What is their definition of humor? And they're going to write it down. So I always have a few things prepared. Comic or amusing quality, okay? Um, let's see if we can go right down to the bottom. The ability to appreciate, now these are from dictionaries, right? Or express what is funny, amusing, or ludicrous. Uh, speech, writing, or action. If you can't see the bottom of that, these are all just definitions you can look up, right? Carol Burnett said, humor is... Pain plus distance. I love that one. And sometimes with my brain, I don't have a lot of distance. The kids need a lot of distance. So keep that one in mind, pain plus distance. But what you're going to do is you're going to write down some kid definitions. You're going to have all these definitions there. So you can go with it. Now, you want to discuss, discuss, discuss anything that comes up from any of these things. 
you're going to discuss it. Discuss how many women are have been written down? How many women were funny characters to them? Now, times are changing, but when I first started doing this, it amazed me. Nobody, nobody had a funny woman character. Not one of my kids. Okay. And that brings us to another discussion that's going to come up. Racist humor, sexist humor, ageist humor, fattest humor. <laughs> that's jokes that really I don't have another word for. Anything offensive to a large group of people is something that needs to be discussed. Okay. I'm working on self-deprecating humor. I am not talking about all old white people uh, of my gender. I'm just talking about myself. And the kids caught me on it once. I said something about white people once. And they said, you're a racist, Mrs. Carter. So I just have learned to couch that in different ways. Now, Yak Yaks used to have, now I haven't been to Yak Yaks for a while. I went with the church groups instead. They had rules for humor, something that you might want to think about. Um, they kept the room dark. This was their rule. They kept the room dark. They clumped people together. And in our classes right now, we can always do that one, right? You don't necessarily want to turn off the lights when you're doing humor in your classroom. Um, they would serve alcohol. Again, something we're not going to do here now. But if you want to get up and go get a drink right now, good, good. Um, and you could not steal anybody else's jokes. Those were the rules that I was taught. And they were just <laughs> messed into me here. Okay. So let's go with my humor. <laughs> just for fun. Don't be funnier than the principal. It's terrible. <laughs> Don't do that. And this one I learned over years. It finally dawned on me. Sometimes the kids are laughing, but it's nervous laughter. You'll find a bunch of girls like giggling because something's gone wrong in the classroom. They're not laughing at what's gone wrong. They're giggling because it's their nerves. It's a nervous thing. So keep that in mind sometimes when something happens in your classroom. I want you to laugh with the kids, not at the kids. You can go home and tell your husband maybe, but not at the kids with them. And like I learned with Mallory, okay, tell them when they're funny. Okay. Sticking happening here. Tell them when they're funny. And the last one, very important. You can't see because I've got sticking happening. Have some fun every day. If you're to the point where you're not having fun every day in your classroom somewhere or other, even if it's just one of your eight or 10 classes you teach, hopefully you have fun every day. Okay. So here we are. Lesson two, uh, researching some humor. I liked doing this research thing to explain to them how many different types of humor there was out there, there are out there. Um, I would, with these devices they have nowadays, you can do so much on the device. Have them research different uh, types of humor in small groups. So have one group doing drool, have one group doing parody, irony, political, practical jokes, self-deprecating, which is the one I always go back to, Canadian humor, American humor, British humor, because they're different. I have a list of 23 acceptable kinds of humor and six that are not. Shots and Freuda is not something I would touch until I taught grade 11 or 12. Shots and Freud is laughing at other people's uh, downfalls, right? And it's a German word. And if you type in Shots and Freud, S C H, and then a whole bunch of other letters, Shots and Freud in YouTube, there's a song. 
is very interesting, just for your own information. Um, there's so many different kinds of humor, and that's why no funny movies have ever won Academy Awards. Because everybody's got a different sense of what's funny. Um, so the this is your opportunity to have the kids doing the research, presenting examples to the rest of the class, maybe. Um, you're going to vet them first. Uh, you go over while they're working on it, watch their samples so that it's acceptable. Tell them, if your grandma won't want to see this, we don't want to see it either. Um, so what humor is acceptable? And that's part of the discussion underneath all that. What's acceptable in our classroom? What's not? You're developing a rule on humor with your kids in the classroom, right? Now, your homework. Um, as we went along here, the homework for the first lesson, of course, was to actually watch some of the shows that, they, that you haven't seen. You might want to, before you get into a large discussion about it, um, your homework for this one is to work on your funny story, okay? And that's because my next lesson is funny stories, okay? Are there any questions so far? I haven't uh, stopped long enough. I've been just motoring along. So if you have any questions, like, um, let me know. I see on my list here. Uh, I'll take a minute and answer anything. If I can get going here. I love teaching virtually because nobody sees me, but that's right. Yeah, I love it, love it. I can fix the lighting. I can wear a pajama. Anyway, so if you have any uh, questions for things up to this point, please let me know. And I'm going to give you my email afterwards so that you can ask anything you think of later. Now, the last thing is lesson three, which is... I call it grr. I, I like saying that to the, my grade eights because I like grr. And I said to them, get ridiculous and repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, and repeat it. So this is how you develop your funny story is my grr method. <laughs> um, boys and girls, I want you to write down something embarrassing that's happened to you. And some of the kids are going to look at you like deer in the headlights and say, well, I, yeah, and they won't know what to write down. And remember, pain plus distance is humor. So some of them have to go quite a ways back. Some of the kids won't even know anything embarrassing until their friends remind them. Or maybe something that happened with their brothers and sisters that got you into trouble could be something that's embarrassing to you. And we're not talking about going to jail here. We're talking about something slightly embarrassing, okay? We're just kind of keeping the lid on that. And if the class starts discussing what's embarrassing, what's acceptable, what's not, that's good, okay? Boys and girls, I want you to write down what was embarrassing for you. I want you to write that down. Just think about it for a minute. Let's not discuss it yet, okay? And now look at your little sentence that you wrote down or paragraph if it's really embarrassing. And I want you to think to yourself, can you share this with the rest of the class? And if you can't, cross it out and think of something else. And you don't have to think of anything today. You could go home and ask your parents, what happened when I was a kid that I did? This is junior high, right? Um, high school kids would come up with something, I think, a little faster. Um, go home and ask your parents, you know. Now, when everybody's ready, get them to pick a partner. And you're timing this. Two minutes, maybe three minutes. And you say, okay, I'm timing. First person who has uh, the longest hair, is going to tell their story to the other person, okay? You time them, cut them off, switch partners. You tell the other person what your funny story is or you're embarrassing. embarrassing. We're still on the embarrassing part. Okay, stop everybody. 
time's up. Sit in your classroom, uh, or sorry, sit in your seat and write down um, anything that made the other person laugh. Anything. Did you get a smile? Did you get anything? If they were kind of smiling at something, that's what you write down. Now you exaggerate that when you tell the story, this is what happened to me, blah, blah, you know, you will exaggerate it. Now you get up, find a new partner, remember what was funny, tell that in the story in two minutes, and switch partners again. So write down in your journal, your humor journal, what made people laugh. Tell, did it make them laugh more if you exaggerated? Should you have been subtle? Older kids will get the subtle thing. Are you going to go with that? Okay. Um, somebody's written down what they think. Yeah. We've all been in that pregnant thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's virtual. You have to only look good from the shoulders up. Uh, yeah, you know what? This is something, if you can't find anything embarrassing, the kids will just kind of work on what was funny, and, and they'll go off in a different direction. And so I, things I find embarrassing are quite small, actually, okay? Small things make me embarrassed. So we're working on self-deprecating humor. They don't tell a story about somebody else. Unless that somebody else is in the classroom and they decide to collaborate on it. That could be, all right? So you can repeat and repeat and repeat this part. Because when I develop new comedy, I am actually telling my friends these stories. And if I get a laugh from them, then that goes in. The information, all right? So when I was in Nova Scotia, uh, when we first retired, I went, we lived in Nova Scotia, <clears throat> and I went to church to sing because that was something I didn't have time to do, and I loved to sing, and I taught music, blah, blah. So I go to church to sing, and, and I didn't realize that churches in rural Nova Scotia, where we're living, uh, their business uh, was to keep a choir so that they would have entertainment. We have five minutes left, right? Okay. Stop. Good. Um, so the entertainment was the choir. And unfortunately, uh, that entertainment was for funerals. And I would be called to sing in the choir for funerals. And the choir was situated so we were facing the congregation, all the mourners. And it was awful because I didn't want to catch anybody's eye. I didn't want to start crying because we had to sing. Um, I could not find anything amusing anytime. And I, it was it was kind of a a weird, surreal place to be, all right? So um, one day, sitting in the choir at a funeral and somebody's telephone started to ring very loudly. And it rang and rang and it got to the point where we were in the choir just all looking at each other, who was that, right? So I'm going to try and share my screen with you and share the comedy, which is an, a two-minute bit. Okay, wait, where do I go here? I have to go to share, right? A two-minute bit. We'll make sure it's actually there. See what happens. This is my funeral. Then I'm going to get I always thought I wanted to be cremated, but all of a sudden I changed my mind. I want to have a coffee. And I want to have my cell phone in the car <laughs> with me. And I'm going to pay some kid to phone me. <laughs> it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be cell phone. Is that? <laughs> That's the way I want to go. And I'm thinking, okay, what's the other reason? What's the other reason that 
I'm at a funeral. Okay, for lunch. <laughs> I mean, it's Wednesday and I'm already blowing Monday and Tuesday, so I'm there for lunch, okay? So I was thinking, if it's my funeral, I don't get to have lunch. Now, this is a definite problem. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to read the goodwill, cut a hole in the side, a little door, and then just throw the lunch into me. And I could have it, you know? I want my lunch. And then I was thinking, like, fruitcake would be good. Really good, because it lasts 300 years. <laughs> then I got thinking, okay, okay, chocolate. My favorite is chocolate. Put the chocolate in with it. No, no. Let's make the whole coffin chocolate. <laughs> the whole thing. And then 300 years from now, when they dig me up, all those people are going to be standing around saying, no wonder North Americans had a problem with their weight. Look at the size of the chocolates they ate. <laughs> and then the interesting part will be when they cut it open, will that be soft center? <laughs> or crunchy? I don't know. <laughs> that was for Henry Day. So, so hopefully that doesn't come back up again. Um, I'm wearing the same, pretty much the same outfit. Hey, repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> um, so this is my, oh, wait, something is happening. There we are. Like I thought, it would just keep repeating itself. So uh, that's what I mean by finding something slightly embarrassing. It's not terribly embarrassing, but it's just something that, struck me funny at that time. Remember too, uh, there is the loci method. Uh, last thing for you to write down, loci, L-O-C-I. The loci method, if you want to get into humor and memory, that is an excellent thing. Um, you make yourself a journey that you go on every day, like you get up in the morning, you put on your clothes, you do this and this, and then you remember things by each and every spot on your journey is something to remember. It's it's a fascinating way of learning. Um, I hope you're prepared to teach some humor. Okay, and I'm just going to recap. I think we're at recap. Um, why is humor important? Recognizing the readiness and then actually teaching the lessons. And these can be spaced out, you know, a long way in your year. And you can do some of this by Zoom. And the last thing I wanted to do was give you my email. If you would like a complete copy of everything, uh, that I did for lessons, I'd be happy to send it to you virtually. I'll just do my paper because you can't see the bottom of that, right? Hold that up. Any questions? Anything we want to discuss? Our time is doing pretty good and it's almost lunchtime. You get to go. I challenge you to do something fun and funny next week. One little thing. What can you do in your classroom with your kids that's fun? Teach a girl to be funny. And smile at the end of your day. And not just because the kids are going home. Okay. Have a great year, ladies and gentlemen. And anything you want to ask me or tell me the next session doesn't start for a little while so i can go a couple three minutes over here i'm good if you want to come off mute and talk to me i'm good i just like find telling jokes on a screen <laughs> it's weird it's weird fiona you went off mute <laughs> did you know that Oh, thank you to everyone. I must, I must have touched something on my button. Oh, here. <laughs> yeah. I saw that deer in the headlight look and I went, oh, maybe she didn't mean to go on unmute. Uh, yes. That's too funny. Ha -ha. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go and eat my lunch now, though. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. I have somebody asked me if I have videos online. Yeah. 
YouTube videos. I did, when the pandemic first started, I did more than 14, but I did two weeks isolation videos. I did a video every day. And number nine, the one about teaching is one of my favorites talked about what to do with toilet paper, because that was a big issue at the beginning of the pandemic, right? The toilet paper. <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Was everybody okay with the technical aspect to this? Because honestly, I was just kind of freaked out when I had to do it myself. Uh, why are these things up here? Getting rid of them. Okay. Any questions? Uh, YouTube is Susan Carter Comic. That's all I am. Tried to keep it simple if you type that in. Um, I have that funeral one up. Those two heads that you see, I got their permission to use their heads. Uh, ministers. <laughs> I was telling these jokes in church. That's what I do. Uh, yeah, screen share. That was iffy. I put that screen share thing up and uh, was that a good idea? Do you think? That was the first time I tried. So it was only two minutes, two minutes. Yeah. Tina, thank you for smiling all that time. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. I am, I just so obsess over this Zoom thing, right? <laughs> And thank you, N Chambers. Oh, that's the other thing. I should have changed my name. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, and I have a website. Uh, I can do this halfway. I didn't have time to set this Zoom up properly because I had trouble getting in. Can you read that? Yeah. Yeah. In okay. case. And Irma, thanks for coming. Nancy, Julieta, Lisa. Oh, somebody zipped off before I could say their name. Okay. I hope you had a great conference so far. Hope you learned lots. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nothing else? Anything else? Shall I end the meeting? Nod your head, look intelligent. That's all I ask. Yeah. That's what I said to the kids. All you have to do is nod your head. Okay. Have a great lunch. Take care, everybody. And uh, I will catch you later.